Design of Share Reinforcement The share links or stirrups provide share resistance to share loads of the beam. Theoretically, the maximum share loads occur on the face of the support, which is VED2, and the share link is designed to resist the share loads located at a D distance from the face of the support, which is VED3. In order to do so, you need to find out the location of the surface of the support and also find the locations of 1D distance from the surface of the support. The calculation process it will be slightly lengthy. However, for simplicity, you can always go for a more conservative assumption where the maximum shear load, which is VED1, may be adopted. This diagram shows different types of the shear link. This shear link is used to tie the top and bottom reinforcement bar. The closed link are normally used at the support. The multiple link is normally used when there is a high shear force occur. Normally in our local industry, this type of shear link is used. This diagram shows the arrangement of a shear link in a beam. The specification of shear link is normally written in R, the bar size, and the spacing. Let's say for this case R8300, the alphabet R refers to mouse steel. 8 means the size of the shear link is 8mm, and 300 means the spacing of shear link center to center of 300mm. Normally, mouse steels are used because it is easier to be bent in the construction site. The shear link is arranged in the specified spacing along the beam. Starting from a support surface to another. It is tied with the top and bottom reinforcement bar forming a steel cage in the formwork before concrete are poured in for casting. This slide shows the steps to design the shear reinforcement. First, you need to calculate the ultimate design shear force. Then, you have to determine the shear angles which is between 22 to 45. Next, you determine the shear length amount required, check the minimum shear length required, provide adequate shear length, check for the maximum and minimum shear length spaces, and also calculate the additional longitudinal tensile force caused by the shear force, and check the adequacy of the longitudinal shear steel bar. The equations and the steps are summarized in this slide. There are two equations here. This represents the maximum shear resistance when the shear angle is equal to 22 degree and this represents 45 degree angle. These two equations set the boundary between the shear angle of 22 and 45. The shear resistance is checked against the shear load to determine the relevant shear angle. When your shear load is less than the shear resistance of 22 degree angle, that means the shear angle will be less than 22. 
In this case, you will need to assume the shear angles is equal to 22 degree. When your shear loop is more than the resistance of the member with 45 degree shear angle, you will have to redesign the sections. Specifically, you're going to increase the size of the member. When you find that your shear resistance of angle 22 is greater than your shear load, while your shear resistance of 45 angle is less than your shear load, that means the shear angle will be somewhere in between 22 to 45. With that, you need to determine the exact angle of the shear by using this equation. You need these angles for you for the following calculation. Next, you design for the shear link by using this equation. The angles are obtained from the relevant degree of angle. AS W divided by S represent a ratio of area of shelling divided by its spacing. FYK represent the specified yield strength of its shelling. When mount steel are used, FYK should be equal to 250. Next, you check with the minimum shelling by using this equation. The required amount of shelling should always be greater than the minimum shelling. Bear in mind that there is going to be additional longitudinal force caused by the shear load, which is termed as data FTD. You can compute data FTDD based on the equation. Then you check against this equation. MED max represents the maximum moment along the beam. Z represents the section moduli of the beam section. M per Z is actually an equivalent force caused by the respective moment. And you're going to make sure this have to be less than this. In this case, you may extend the curtailment point of the mid span of the longitudinal long bar towards the support. For a simply supported beam, the shear is at maximum when the moment is equal to zero. However, for continuous beam, there could be regional moment to be added up with the data FTD, especially at the support region. Next, you need to check for the spacing. The maximum longitudinal spacing of the shelling is given by this equation. The angle here represents the angle of the shelling. It is not the same as the shear angle. Normally, we arrange the shelling in the vertical manner. In this case, the maximum longitudinal spacing of the shelling it will be 0.75D. The spacing between the shelling is normally not less than 80 mm. This is due to the common practice and is for the placing and compaction of concrete. You also need to check for the transverse spacing of the shelling. The transverse spacing refer to the spacing here. It should be less than 0.75D and less than 600.